हेलो एवरीवन दिस लेक्चर इज फॉर इंग्लिश लिटरेचर शास्त्री पार्ट थर्ड पेपर फर्स्ट टुडे वी विल स्टडी द फेमस पोएट जॉन कीट्स पोएम ओ टू ओटम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल नो अबाउट द फेमस पोएट जॉन कीट्स जॉन कीट्स वाज बोर्न ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट अक्टूबर सेवनटीन नाइन्टी फाइव एंड ही वॉज डाइड ऑन ट्वेंटी थर्ड फरवरी एटीन ट्वेंटी वन इन द एज ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव जॉन कीट्स वॉज एन इंग्लिश रोमांटिक पोएट ही वॉज वन ऑफ द मेन फिगर्स ऑफ द सेकेंड जनरेशन ऑफ रोमांटिक पोएट्स एलोंग विद लॉर्ड बायरन एंड पी बी सेले डेस्पाइट हिज वर्क्स हैविंग बीन इन पब्लिकेशन फॉर ओनली फोर ईयर्स बिफोर हिज डेथ फ्रॉम ट्यूबर क्लोसिस एट द एज ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव ऑल दो हिज पोएम्स वर नॉट जनरली वेल रिसीव्ड बाई क्रिटिक्स ड्यूरिंग हिज लाइफ टाइम हिज रेपुटेशन ग्रू आफ्टर हिज डेथ एंड बाई द एंड ऑफ द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी He had become one of the most beloved of all English poets. He had a significant influence on a diverse range of poets and writers. George Louis Box states that his first encounter with Keats work was a great experience that he felt. all of his life the poetry of keats is characterized by a style heavily loaded with sensualities most notably in the series of odes this is typical of the romantic poets as they aimed to accentuate extreme emotion through an emphasis on natural imagery today his poem and letters are some of the most popular and most analyzed in english literature some of his acclaimed some of his most acclaimed works are ode to nightingale sleep and poetry and the famous sonnet on first looking into chapman's homer then we come on the poem ode to autumn to autumn is a poem by english romantic poet john keats the work was composed on 19 september 1819 and published in 1820 in a volume of keats poetry that included lamia and the eve of saint agnes to autumn is the final work in a group of poems known as keats 1819 ode although personal problems left him little time to devote to poetry in 1819 he composed to autumn after a walk near winchester one autumnal evening the work marks the end of his poetic career as he needed to earn money and could no longer devote himself to the lifestyle of a poet a little over a year after the publication of to autumn keats died in rome the work marks the end of his poetic career as he needed to earn money and could no longer devote himself to the lifestyle of a poet a little over a year after the publication of to autumn keats died in rome the poet has three eleven line stanza which describe a progression through the season from the late maturation of the crops to the harvest and to the last day of autumn when winter is nearing the imagery 
is richly achieved through the personification of autumn and the description of its bounty its sights and sounds one of the most anthologized english lyric poems to autumn has been regarded by critics as one of the most perfect short poems in the english language it has parallels in the work of english landscape artists with keats himself describing the fields of stubble that he saw on his walk as conveying the warmth of some pictures the work has been interpreted as a meditation on death as an allegory of artist artistic creation as keats responds to the peterloo massacre which took place in the same year and as an expression of nationalist sentiment now we come on the original text of the poet stanza first season of mist and mellow fruitfulness close bosom friend of the maturing sun conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the vines that round the thatch even to bend with apples the most cottage trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core to swell the gourd and plump the hazel cells with a sweet kernel to set budding more and still more later flowers for the bees until they think warm days will never cease for summer has over brimmed their slim clammy cells <clears throat> the word meaning of the some typical words in line 2 maturing sun here maturing sun means the cottage plants to mature and in line number 4 thatched means covering of a roof made of straw or cut reed eave eave means overhang of roof then in line number 5 moist means covered with moj in line number 7 the word is gourd which means family includes squares pumpkins and cucumbers and the another word which is hazel which means the hazel tree that produced edible hazel nuts in line number 11 the word is over poetic which means poetic form of over thus the cells are over filled the word is cell means honey filled cells or honey comb in the bee hive <coughs> then we come on the paraphrase of the stanza first autumn the season associated with mist and a general sense of calm abundance you are an intimate friend of the sun whose heat and light helps all these fruits and vegetables grow you work closely with the sun to make lots of fruits grow on the vines that wrap around the roof is of the farm house you work to make so much fruit grow that it weight down the branches of the moji apple trees that grow outside the farm houses together you and the sun make every fruit completely ripe you make gourd swell and hazel cells grow fat with a sweet nut inside you make the flowers grow new buds and keep growing more and when these buds bloom bees gather the flowers pollen those bees think 
your warmth will last forever because summer brought so brought so many flowers and so much pollen that the bee hives are now overflowing with honey there is no doubt that personification is at work in this wonderfully balanced ode from the first three lines it is crystal clear that the sun a male symbol associated with apollo the greek god is conspiring with a partner who is a close bosom friend of the opposite sex this female could be demeter the greek goddess of agriculture and natural fertility they combine their energies to load bless band fill swell pump and set all the flora harvest time has arrived and there is a bounty secretly produced by these powerful spirits <clears throat> not the sensuous language the soft cons- consonant a king m h and f the contrasting short and long vowels reflecting the tension at work as the whole plant world comes to fruition the first stanza is one long sentence taking in cosmic sun and microcosmic b and cell building into a heaped and humming climax onomatopoeia filling the last line <coughs> then we come on the second stanza who hath not seen the opt amid thy store sometimes who ever seeks abroad may find the sitting careless on a green tree floor thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind or on a harp reaped fro sound asleep dosed with the fume of puppies while thy hook spears the neck straight and all its twinned flowers and sometimes like a gleaner thou dost keep study thy laden head across a brook or by a cider press with patient look thou watchest the last oozing hours by hours <coughs> then we look some typical words of this stanza in the line number first of this stanza the word is store which means an abundance a great quantity a storehouse or a warehouse then d archaic u ottoman personified then in line number 3 granary a storehouse for grain often after it has been thrashed <clears throat> in line number 4 winnowing means to separate the chaff from the grain by fanning or by means of the wind then thy archaic or your in line number 5 fro a cut or trench made by a plow poetic usage a plowed field then in line number 6 drossed which means made sleepy hook a sickle or scythe used a harvest grains and other crops then puppy puppy is used to grow in field of grain certain puppies are the source of opium in line number 7 sweat which means the 
sweep of a scythe in moving the path cut in one sweep of a scythe then the word is twinned which means poetic form of entwined or twisted in line number 8 the word is gleaner which is used for a person who gathers what the reapers have left in a field gleaning was made illegal shortly before kids wrote the poem in line number 10 cider press which means apparatus that is squeeze apples to make cider <laughs> then we come on the paraphrase of this stanza who has not noticed you bottom in the place where your bounty is kept any person who finds themselves wandering about is likely to find you sitting lazy on the floor of the building where grain is stored and notice your hair lifted by a light wind that separates strands of hair in the same way a harvester might separate the components of a grain of wheat anyone might also find you asleep in the fields on an incompletely harvested crop row fatigued because of the sleep including aroma of the puppies in that case your saidi which you would be in, you had been using to cut the crops would be cast to the side it would just be lying there and therefore the next section of the twisted flowers would be saved from being cut sometimes autumn you are like the agricultural laborer who picks up loose cutting from the fields after the harvest like this laborer who has to be observant you watch the steam with your full heavy head of fruit and leaves other times you patiently watch the machine that juice the apple for cider nothing how the juice and pulp slowly ooze out the machine over the course of many hours after all the hard work through the late summer months come comes the question a direct question based again on the imaginative sensitivity perhaps this female spirit this god goddess near exhaustions now relaxes even sleep stasis has been reached the speaker suggest that her hair is soft lifted by winnowing wind an alliterative ono motipie line the conjures up whistling or winning of hosage this female spirit overlooks various aspects of the harvest now that the reaping threshing and gleaning has finished she takes her time as the apple juice ferments not the languid slow feel of the last line with its slow long vowels almost an adagio then we come on the third stanza where are the songs of spring are a where are they think not of them thou hast thy music too while beard clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the subtle plains with rosy hue then in a wailful choir the smell nuts mourn among the river sallows born elopt 
or sinking as the light wind lives or dies and full grown lambs loud bleat from hilly born hedge crickets sing and now with terrible soft the red breast whistles from a garden cropped and gathering swallows twitter in the sky then we come on some typical words in this stanza the line number third in this stanza the word is used bared clouds which means thin horizontal clouds which resembles bar or strips in line number 4 the word is used stubble which means the dried stumps of wheat and other grain left after reaping in the line number 6 the word is swallows which means member of willow family born then in this line the another word is borne aloft which means carried high in the line number 7 the word is used born which means domain of or realm and in line number 8 the word is used cropped which means a small enclosed field then we come on the paraphrase of the stanza third where is the music that characterizes spring for example bird song i repeat where is it don't think about the spring and its typical music you have your own music the background of your music is a scene in which beautiful shadowed clouds expand in the evening sky and filter the sunlight such that it cast pink upon the fields which have been harvested your music includes nuts which hum mournfully among the willows that grow along the river banks and which rise and fall according to the strength of the wind it includes mature fully grown lambs that make their bath sound from the fens of their hilly enclosure it includes the cricket singing in the bushes and a red breast bird that softly whistles from a small garden and lastly it includes the growing flock of swallows which rise and sing together against the darkening sky the second and the third question appear asking about the inspirational music of spring but that <clears throat> enlivening season and its song have gone replaced by a more somber music think not of them is the speaker and reassuring the female spirit that autumn too has a valid role to play in the cycle of life there is no turning back the clock the language of line lines 25 to 29 speaks for itself soft dying day wailful morn sinking dies things are coming to an end and the atmosphere is one almost of lament the rhymes in line 29 enhance of feeling of the seasonal change about the take place about to take place not the spondy and the pheric alongside the lambic which alters the pace and reflects the grand the nuts river dance and gives a little of cadence this melancholic mid section of the final stanza has to be acknowledged but the ending is one of inevitable renewal and positive change the hedge cricket the robin red breast and the swallows are 
communicating the letter about to journey south to find warmth and a new life then we come on some characteristics of this poem this poem is an ode this poem is an ode and then we come on what is an ode an ode is a long lyrical poem which is written in a stanzic form it is an elaborately structured poem praising or glorifying an event or individual describing nature intellectually as well as emotionally in an ode the poet directly addresses the object a classical ode is structured in three major parts the strophe the antistrophe and the epode different form such as the homostrophic ode and the irregular ode also enter thanks